So what's in the IDT? Interrupt descriptors are what's in the IDT, and there's two types of descriptors. There are interrupt gates and trap gates. And for all intents and purposes, and as far as you're concerned for right now, these two are exactly the same, because the only difference between an interrupt gate and a trap gate is the way the processor handles the interrupt flag flag in the eFlags register. The interrupt flag is discussed in the next section, so for now let's just treat it like they're exactly the same thing. So this is the this is the format of the interrupt or trap gate, and it should look very familiar to you because it looks very similar to other types of descriptors that we saw in the GDT. So if we squint our eyes, we kind of see that, well, it's got a segment selector and it's got a 64-bit offset, and so that should look like a logical address or a far pointer to you. Beyond which, it looks very similar to another gate that we've seen before, a call gate. So interrupt gate, call gate, interrupt gate, call gate, interrupt gate, call gate. I'm seeing double here, four crusties. So the IDT relation to segmentation, as already mentioned in the previous section, is that there's effectively a logical address, a far pointer inside the IDT. So that far pointer is going to have a segment selector that selects something from the GDT, but because this is interrupt is getting code execution somewhere else in interrupt procedure, the base is always zero, but the access control stuff is still checked. So interrupt gates and trap gates, the type is 1110 for interrupt gate and 1111 for trap gate. And that's actually what we're seeing in this table, 1110 for interrupt gate and 1111 for trap gate. And with that, we've actually now seen every single type of 64-bit segment descriptor and gate descriptor. So call gates, interrupt trap gates, and TSS segment and LDT segment. So P bit, as before, present bit indicates whether or not anything here is valid. And if it's, if it's zero and someone tries to use it, that'll cause an error. And DPL is again the descriptor privilege level. And this is going to be checked when a software interrupt is occurring, not when a hardware interrupt occurs. So if a software interrupt is called and it calls through this interrupt gate, then it's going to check that the current privilege level is less than or equal to the descriptor privilege level. So if, for instance, this DPL was set to zero and you were at CPL three, then it would not allow you through here. The IST field, on the other hand, is the only really meaningful difference between this interrupt gate and the call gates from previously. The IST was that interrupt stack table, and we had seen in the TSS that it would be seven possible values that can specify for this specific interrupt, I want my RSP to be from that table. So here's that again. So now we know this is what an interrupt descriptor looks like. So if IST is non-zero, then that means that it's trying to say, I want to use IST entry one, two, et cetera, up to seven. If it's zero, that's reserved and that's not used. So if it's zero, then instead of using an IST entry, it's basically going to use these traditional TSS entries for if you're going to ring zero, if you're going to ring one, if you're going to ring two. 